Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with me, myself, and I. We're on a date right now, and I'm so excited because I brought my journal. It's dinosaur years, okay? <laughs> my computer isn't working, so I actually journaled out today's episode, and I'm so excited. Like, my whole entire outline covered up, like, five pages of this, and honestly, I think I might continue to do that because I feel like it was a little therapeutic for me. Something about typing just puts me in work mode. So this felt like more personal, more journal. Like this is my actual journal that I use. I got it from Amazon. I'll link it down below if you guys want to grab it. My mom actually got it for me. Um, can't take all the credit. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about how to set yourself up for success and how to embrace change. Because I feel like I am coming up on a year of working for myself and I've mentioned this a lot on this podcast and in my YouTube videos and whatnot about how this year for me was a big transition year and how I'm trying to get back up on my feet and figure out what do I want to do. I wasn't putting too much pressure on like grind, work, like you need to be doing A, B, and C mainly because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And coming up on a year of the transition and doing a lot of traveling and just self-work, I am now ready to grind and, you know, enter my Gary V era. And I was thinking about how a lot of people probably in their 20s or outside of their 20s go through these phases of life where they're like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm thinking about quitting my job but I don't know really what I want to do next, but I know that chapter needs to close and, you know, this friendship isn't really working out or I want to get into this new hobby. I just feel like your 20s are the years to figure your shit out and figure out who you are as a person. And the best way to figure out what you like and who you are as a person is by figuring out what you don't like. So that's kind of what I've been doing the past year is just a lot of self-discovery, self-work, because I definitely had that quarter life crisis. And now I'm entering my Gary Vee era. So I wanted to tell you my tips and tricks on how I set myself up for success. And this is literally what I'm going through right now. And these are the things that came to mind as I'm shifting and changing and moving forward personally and professionally. So let's get into it. Let me open up my heavy duty journal. <laughs> the first thing is simple, but it's very true. It's surround yourself with people that you want to be like. Now, I'm not talking about people that are like you. I'm talking about people you want to be like. Do you get the difference? If you're just surrounding yourself with people who are like you, you're not going to evolve and grow as a person. Okay. You're just going to stay put where you're at. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to constantly be evolving, moving forward, meeting new people, reaching bigger and better things as life goes on. I want to look at my life as chapters and look back at all the different chapters I had. I don't want to just stay stuck in one chapter. One of the sayings I live by is you are your five best friends. And if you are not surrounding yourself with people you want to be like and who are a direct reflection of you, like if you don't like that they're representing you, because essentially they are. Like if, if your five best friends aren't people you would want to introduce to everyone in your life, then you should probably reevaluate who you're hanging out with. Because humans are creatures of habit. We pick up on things that our surroundings are doing, okay? You kind of form to your friends, essentially. Have you guys ever had a friend where they like say a cool saying or word? I'm gonna use the example as slay, even though slay is so outdated, or like purr or whatever. The house down boots, like one of those sayings. Like the first time they say it, it sounds cool, and then you start saying it, and then your five best friends start saying it, and it's just the snowball effect. Like if their outlook isn't what your outlook is on life, then you should probably think about reevaluating the people you're surrounding yourself with because talk about being influenced like your five best friends are going to influence you the most out of anyone in this world i think it's really important about every quarter of the year to just check in with yourself and be like okay are these five people supportive are they helping me are they encouraging me are they um, a great reflection of me do they want the best for me 
do I want the best for them? And it's okay to be selfish in these moments. I feel like throughout my entire life, I've always been the one that's like, I'm such a good friend. I took so much pride in being a good friend. And now I'm trying to te train myself on how to make people be good friends to me. And that goes back to my people pleasing self. Like I need to work on not giving a fuck what other people think and putting me first. And that's something that's been really challenging is watering my own plant before I water others because that's just not natural really for me, but I'm trying to make it natural. And I've been really selfish in the last couple of months realizing, okay, is this person serving me? Is this person helping me become a better person? Is this person challenging me to help me get to the level I want to be at? And even simple things like, are they speaking highly about me when I'm not around? Do I think they're smart? Are they leveling up personally and professionally? Do I admire them? Do I want to be like them? Do they add value to my life? And let me just tell you, it's okay if you realize that someone in your top five is not serving you and you need to move forward and find someone else to fill that spot because that's just how life goes. People come and go for seasons of your life, especially in your 20s. It still happens when you get older. I hear my mom and her friends talking all the time about, you know, a falling out they have with a friend and then they move forward and they find someone else to walk through that door and help serve them for that season of life. So I look at it as more of a positive thing than a negative thing. Like, this is the direction I'm growing in. And sometimes your friends at the time are growing in another direction and that's totally okay. But it is important to be stern about surrounding yourself with people that are constantly lifting you up and encouraging you on whatever direction you're deciding to go on. Because if they're not, you know, a ride or die person, then you need to get them out of your life or distance yourself. You don't even have to like cut them off or be toxic. But I just think it's so important to surround yourself with people who you want to be like. And of course, that's going to change over time because if you're growing and the rest of your crew isn't, then of course you're going to find other people who you want to be like. You constantly want to be growing as a person. And I think one of the best ways to do that is surrounding yourself by people who you want to be like and who are growing as well. Another thing I'll add is that people change their mind about career paths and, you know, what the direction they want to head down or where they want to move or, you know, a plethora of things. People change their mind all of the time. And because of that, your interests change. And then you find someone who's more aligned with your interests at the time. So, for instance, I'm really into hosting right now. So I would love to find like a hosting mentor or, you know, someone that's been in the business for a really long time and surround myself with people like that that have a lot more experience um, and can add value to my life. And hopefully I can add value to theirs in another area of their life. I also am being very particular about the way my friends are starting to talk about dating and relationships and whatnot because I'm like sick and tired of the fuck boy shit and I want to find an actual boyfriend or an actual relationship that's like long term and I don't want to be surrounding myself with people that have this constant negative outlook on dating because that's not good for my energy or orbit and it's not personal like I'm like I get it I had that phase as well you do you. If I'm trying to walk down the aisle one day, that is not the energy I need in my life right now. Does that make sense? Like, it's nothing personal. It's just putting yourself first and making smart decisions for yourself. So, yeah, that's the first thing is surround yourself with people you want to be like. The next key to success is to start living the lifestyle that you want to live. Like, not only do you need to be visualizing the lifestyle you want to live in your journal, but you need to start actively living it. And I don't mean like buy the Lamborghini and go into debt and like just start driving this Lamborghini because that's what you've always wanted and that's your dream. No, I mean, quite literally your everyday actions, you need to start living like the person you want to be. So let's say your dream is to be a business owner and you're in charge of 100 plus employees and you know, you want a private jet one day. Let's say that's your dream. You need to start living like how that version of yourself will be living. So for me, if I want to be a big time host hosting on a late night television show or any television show, and I visualize myself, you know, constantly interviewing ginormous celebrity guests or whatever, like that is one of my dreams is to 
do those things. I visualize myself getting up extra early, getting my workout in for an hour every morning, eating healthy, fueling myself with um, healthy foods, not surrounding myself with toxic people. I don't picture the host of a huge television network scrolling on their phone for five hours a day comparing themselves to other insta baddies like that is not in the cards for that version of me and that absolutely should not be in the cards for this version of me because that is going to hold me back from reaching that goal so what i would suggest is getting a journal and writing down what's your ultimate end all be all goals like is it to be married is it to have children is it to be a stay-at-home mom is it to crush your job but also crush your role as a mother whatever it is write it down and think backwards how are you going to get there because i can guarantee you it is not by scrolling five hours a day waking up at noon ordering food constantly and just rotting all day long there's no way in hell i'm going to reach my goals by doing that does that make sense? It's really simple. All you have to do is write down your goal and work backwards. I'm trying to make small changes in my life right now to live like the dream version of myself. The girl that is hosting a network television show. The girl that is booked and busy. The girl that has a husband and kids. The girl that um, is running a company. Like If those are things that I have the desire to do one day, I'm now working backwards and starting to make little lifestyle changes that will help me get to that goal. You can even get into the real nitty gritty. Like let's say you picture yourself out to business dinners and you have your go-to dirty martini or be a stickler about your coffee. If that's what you picture yourself doing in the future, start doing that now. And you can be particular about this. Like if you picture yourself out at catch you know, with a bunch of executives and you're paying for the dinner and you're a stickler about the way you want your dirty martini with tequila and extra olive juice and like you don't even like vodka or whatever. Are you bringing your own vodka that you're going to eventually come out with? Like, I don't care. Be psychotic about it for all I care. If you picture yourself doing that, then start doing that now. Like start making your signature drink, maybe not be as crazy as, you know, your future self or whatever. But like, it's okay to start playing into that role because you're forming habits right now that will continue to progress as you grow. Oh, another thing I wrote down that I thought was genius <laughs> was if you picture yourself being this like boss ass bitch or, you know, accomplishing all these dreams and stuff like I picture myself right now, you know, again, being this boss ass bitch, paying for dinner for executives, networking, being a mom, having a hot husband. Like if I picture all of these things, one of the things I'm going to start doing right now, which I feel like I've already done and have continued to do is this is so simple. Just start being nice to strangers. Okay. Be as nice to the biggest executive important person, you know, as you are to your doorman, as you are to the mailman, as you are to your barista, whoever it is, simply being nice to people and going the extra mile for them and helping others and showing up for them. It's insane how rare it is for someone to show up for you when you need them. Like when I think about the year I had a quarter life crisis and I was down bad, like so many people that I thought would show up in my life did not. That year I felt like I was in the middle of the ocean swimming, trying to tread water. And my friends, some of my friends were like on a boat nearby and they couldn't even toss me a life jacket. Like that's what it felt like. And that's fucked up. Like I want to be the person that's reliable, that shows up for my friends, that shows up for people and people that aren't even my friends. Like I show up because I'm a good person and I have a high level of integrity. And um, that translates later on. Like you never know if that barista one day is going to end up being the lead actress in Barbie. Like you really do never know. And not only does it make you feel good when you're nice to others, but hello, have you ever heard of this thing called karma? Like karma is a cat. Karma is your, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> karma is real. And when you put good out into the world, good comes back. And um, the amount of times I've like helped someone out, I, this just happened. I helped someone out a long time ago, a few years ago when I met this guy in LA and I was helping him out with some things and connecting him with some people I knew. And just the other day I hit him up because now he has this epic job and my brother's looking for a job. And I asked if, you know, he would take the time to talk to my brother. And he was like, absolutely, I would love to. And it felt like such a full circle moment. And it made me really happy knowing like, 
out of the kindness of my heart, I just happened to help this guy that like had nothing to offer me at the time, which is totally fine. Like who fucking cares? Like you shouldn't ever help someone with the hopes that they return the favor one day. Like you, it's like giving a gift. Like when you give a gift, I would hope you're not like, well, they better give me a better gift or they better give me a good gift one day. Like just give it out of the kindness of your own heart. And I guarantee you, whether it's that person or through something else in this world, something good is going to come back in your favor. So it's literally so simple. Just start being nice to everyone that you know in your life. And you never know when one day they'll come around and they can help you and be nice to you one day. If you start doing those little things like drinking water every day, getting up early, making your bed, doing the things you picture your higher best self doing, if you start doing those things, you will eventually form into that higher self. And when I tell you, it is the best feeling in the world when you do all those little things in a day and you like cross them off the checklist. Like I'll literally write the dumbest shit on my to-do list because it makes me feel good and accomplished. Like I'll write, drink three to five of these. I will write, go on a hot girl walk or get my 10,000 steps. I will write, make your bed. Like dead ass, I'll write, make your bed. Because those are the things I'm trying to form into a habit because that is the type of habit my higher self has. Does that make sense? In addition to living the lifestyle of your higher self, I've been thinking about this concept a lot when it comes to dating. And someone actually told me this, my friend Margaret, who is a literal genius. <laughs> I adore her. She's one of the girls that I met when I went to Italy for a month and we traveled together and I didn't even know her at the time and now we're really close. Anyway, she told me that I need to start living the lifestyle of the person that I want to date. So if I want my significant other to be active or to be fit or to have great skin or to, you know, be a healthy person or be really good at a sport, like whatever it is, I need to start doing those things as well. Like I need to start taking care of myself. If I want them to keep their living space tidy, I need to start doing that because I can't expect them to be doing that if I'm not doing that. So that's another way I like to think of it is like, okay, would my future significant other, like would I want them to be doing whatever bullshit I'm doing right now? Because I sure as hell don't want them scrolling on Instagram for five hours a day. I don't want them rotting in bed all day. I want someone who's out and about, who has a friend group, who is a blast to be around, who is active, who has hobbies, who has interesting things about them. Like I don't want someone that's just going to be rotting in bed, doing nothing and ordering food all day and being sad and making excuses for themselves. I want someone who is confident, out and about, active, fun, like all of the things I just listed. So therefore I can't be in my bed rotting, making excuses for myself, being sad girl, binging shows. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I totally think it's fine to every once in a while, binge your show, lay in bed all day. Like every once in a while, of course, sometimes we need those days, but do I think that's good to do every day? Absolutely not. Get your ass up out of your house and get some sunlight. Like it's crazy the benefits of you getting outside of your house the first thing after you wake up and getting direct sunlight. Like all you have to do is go outside. You don't even have to walk. If you want to feel even better, go for a walk in the morning. Like get up early. I've never gotten up early and been mad that I got up early and been like, ah, oh, that was a shitty idea. Like unless I'm violently hungover. Yeah, you need to start living the lifestyle of the person you want to date. You will attract that type of person if you're giving off that energy and vibe. If I want my significant other to constantly be learning more and educating themselves, I should be doing the same. So it's so easy. The amount of free resources that are out there of podcasts, books, master classes, TED Talks, YouTube videos, like shows, documentaries, like it really is endless the amount of things you can constantly be learning. And I feel like I've noticed ever since I quit my job, and now that I'm out of school, it's like, what am I doing to learn more? Now that I don't have a boss that I'm asking a gazillion questions to a day or like coworkers, I'm asking a gazillion questions to a day and learning from them. And, you know, I work for myself. I'm not even around that many people that often during the actual day. And then on top of that, it's not like I'm studying or learning something new because it's not like I'm in school anymore. I'm like, damn, what am I doing to educate myself and like learn more constantly? Well, 
It's so easy. While I'm walking or while I'm in the car or while I'm literally cleaning my house, throw on an educational podcast. And a lot of the educational podcasts out there sometimes can be entertaining as well. Like some of my favorites are the Mel Robbins podcast. I love the Huberman Lab. I love Leo Skeppi's podcast. His is really motivating. Lately, I've been loving the toast because it's purely entertaining and they give me my like pop culture fix. And I feel like I need to know what's going on in pop culture just because of it's a part of my job. The resources out there are limitless. Let me know. I can make a list on my Instagram story of like my favorite podcasts and resources and things out there. I just finished up a book called The Defining Decade. And that was all about, you know, how to maximize your time in your 20s. And that I learned so much from. The book Atomic Habits is, is another great resource. So just make sure you're doing your research still and constantly like learning something. Even if it's the most random thing, like you want to learn about sea creatures or like marine life, like I don't fucking care, but constantly be learning something new. Like my mom's really into AI right now and feel like all the time she's talking to me about AI and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not really into AI right now. I probably should be. But like, I'm glad that you have your hobby. It's like interesting to me that you're so interested in that. So if you're single and you're not living the life of the type of person you want to date, Tweak some things because I guarantee you, you'll start attracting that type of guy. And I'm not going to lie, like at the beginning of the year when I was like talking to this guy, like I don't think I would have attracted him if I hadn't tweaked some things in my life. Like truly, like I feel like we had a lot of similar energy going on and that's why we connected. And it's sexy when someone has a passion for something, whether it's their work or a hobby or a sport or whatever it is, like it's hot when someone has something else going on other than the obvious. I think it's so hot when someone has like a nine to five after their five to nine, or you know, they're grinding on their side hustle project, entrepreneur, startup type shit. Like that to me is hot when someone's like, yeah, I'm also working on this, or you know, I also have this podcast, or I also have this relationship with blah, 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 or I have this book club. Like that is interesting to me. That stands out and that's sexy. The fourth tip on how to set yourself up for success is by embracing change. Y'all, change is so good. Like, I fucking hate when someone's like, they've changed. I'm like, that's literally so fucking embarrassing. When someone, like, in a condescending, weird, like, negative way is like, they've changed. That is so embarrassing. That is saying everything about you. That means you haven't changed, you haven't leveled up, and you're envious of that person for changing. Like, that is so embarrassing when people say that in a negative way. Like, mm, yeah, like, they've changed. And when people say that, I'm literally like, I get the ick. I'm like, Ugh! you guys, that is so embarrassing. Change is good. Change should be embraced. Change is hard, but it's good. That means you're leveling up. That means you're going on to a new chapter in your life. Like I said at the beginning of this podcast, you don't want to live your entire life in one chapter or better yet, three chapters. I want to have like 200,000 chapters of my life and be like, oh yeah, that one year I had my yoga phase and then the next year I dated this guy where blah, blah, blah. And then the next year I had this crazy job and then the next year I lived in Africa. Like I want to look back on my life and be like, holy shit, there's so many different chapters in my life. I lived like that to me is living and like the number one thing older people say that they regret not doing when they were younger is just not doing things like not changing not putting themselves out there not doing the things they've always wanted to do if anyone throws you any shade for changing and leveling up your life and wanting to start a new avenue or be a better person or work for yourself or whatever it is like they're fucking weird. Anyone that throws you shade is jealous or envious. It is beyond weird and almost immature if you are throwing shade at someone for wanting to level up their life and um, change a little. Like, that's totally fine. I think when people are wanting to change and want to level up, whether it's like they want to cut out alcohol or they want to make little changes, like they want to start traveling once a year or they want to cut out caffeine, like whatever it is, like... I'm never like, ew, why are they not doing that? Like, that's so embarrassing. It's sexy when someone wants to be a better version of themselves. And I think a lot of times when change is presented in someone's life, 
I think a lot of people get scared and don't embrace it and never change. And I think that's more embarrassing than changing all the time. I always think about my YouTube channel, like, thank fucking God I changed things. <laughs> like, imagine if I didn't, my videos would suck. My editing would suck. I feel like I even changed my look in some ways, like on how to do my makeup better. And I leveled up my look and how to actually do my hair or whatever it is. Like, thank God I changed because if y'all were watching the same quality as the first video I ever uploaded on YouTube, like I would never have grown. No good would have come from that. Change is good. Change is usually challenging. So this is when I want you to get really strong and realize even though it's challenging doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, because it's challenging means you should lean into it even more. I feel like when I look back on times in my life, the greatest struggles I have ever had or dealt with ended up being the best thing for me. And I swear like the struggle and the challenge of change is where the magic happens. Like that's when, you know, your best hit single is written. That's when you start growing the audience you want to grow on social media. That's when you find your lifelong partner. That's when the good shit happens. I even wrote down change slash struggle is when life-changing shit happens. It's when you're forced to start the company you've always wanted to. It goes back to the quote I am obsessed with, necessity is the mother of invention. When you get fired from your job and you have zero funds, that's when you have to start the company because it's a necessity. That's when you have to start the company to make money. When you meet your significant other, when you do the impossible, when you get out of your comfort zone, when real memories are made. Whenever I think of a significant memory in my head that's like I can literally picture it like I'm there, those were moments where it was like crazy change hard it was such a catastrophic event in my life that I remember it so well and now it's such a fond memory to look back on like holy shit I can't believe I got through that and change at the end of the day keeps life exciting like I don't want to be doing the same damn thing every day I don't want to be like a sims character <laughs> and like wake up eat the same meals see the same people like that is not fun. Life is a whole lot more exciting when you decide to change some things up. Here's times in my life where I feel like change has been great for me. When I moved to LA, when I quit my job, when I moved into my apartment, when I started to date this guy that was so out of my normal type, like I learned so much from that relationship and I feel like I'm so much more confident in me and what I want in a person, like that was a great change. My first breakup, when I met new friends, when I started changing some health habits. I feel like all of the times in my life where I've made significant moves, LOL making moves, it has been when there has been a struggle or a big change happening and I look back now and I'm like, thank fucking God I embraced that change. So that's number four for how to set yourself up for success, embrace change. The next tip I have for setting yourself up for success is challenging yourself. Ask the question to yourself, are you challenging yourself right now? Like for real, are you? Like, are you challenging yourself to be better in the gym? Are you challenging yourself to meet new people? Are you challenging yourself at work? Like, are you doing the most at work right now or are you just getting by? If you want to be that dream version of yourself, I guarantee you, you're not going to get to that by just getting by at work right now. Like, do the most, bestie. Like, we literally have one life to live. What if I told you you were going to die in, like, two years? Like, dead ass. Life is so short. Start making some moves. Move and shake some things at work this week. We'll just see what happens. You just never know. I find personally when I am comfortable and just in a routine, nothing groundbreaking happens. It's when I'm challenged and uncomfortable when the good shit happens, the crazy shit in my life happens. It's like when one door closes, another crazy one opens. And it's ultimately when I see the most growth in my life, when I challenge myself. So again, in your journal, break it open, get a nice gel pen and ask yourself, what are you doing to challenge yourself right now? And what are you doing to get outside of your comfort zone? And you can start small. It doesn't need to be insane. Start with a little progress at the gym or getting that sunlight right in the morning. It doesn't have to be that deep. And if you're constantly getting 1% better each day, think about day 50. Like you're going to be 50% better than you were from day one. 
Like it's so simple, but it's hard. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be the first to admit, like it's hard to stick to a new habit or challenge yourself. Like sometimes you're not in the mood, but that's when you have to be disciplined with yourself and realize, no, this is where I want to be. This is how I'm going to get there. That's why I think it's so important to really visualize where you want to be in life. Because if you have that goal constantly in your head, and you're constantly going back to your journal and reminding yourself of that goal and how you need to get there, that's what keeps you on track. Another thing you guys need to be doing is asking some damn good questions. People be asking the dumbest questions or no questions at all. And it's crazy because like people that could literally change your life are right in front of your face and you're not even asking a question about like how they could help you. Like it's crazy how simple it is. Whatever it is you're trying to start or do, it's insane how much knowledge you can get by simply asking the right person the right question. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with people you want to be like or wh who you want to learn from because they're literally a real life TED talk or a real life book and they can give you personal experience to help you not make the same mistakes that they did. And something I wish I would have realized a lot earlier is that it's okay to ask for help. You can go to anyone in your life and ask them for business help, for relationship help, for financial advice, for social media growth help, health and fitness tips, marriage tips, parenting tips. I think one of the best ways to learn in life is through experience. And how cool is it that we have all these people in our life at our disposal to literally ask from their personal experience so we don't make the same mistakes. I guarantee you there's someone in your life you could ask. There's literally YouTubers you could comment and ask like, hey, how did you go about this? And a lot of times they'll respond or in DMs. It's such an underrated skill or thing to do is be good at asking great questions to the right people. Like if you just match make those two things, you will learn so much. And my favorite thing about asking someone I know personally for advice is that their advice they're giving me is also personal to me. So for instance, it's a lot different than like advice from a podcaster or advice from a book or advice from, you know, a huge CEO that's like speaking on a panel or whatever. This person in your real life is going to narrow down their answer so that it helps benefit you. So I always think about that when I'm around someone that I feel like I can learn something new from is holy shit, like they have so much knowledge and experience, they can now teach me what they have learned and personalize their answer towards me because we're the only ones talking right now. It's such an underrated tool in your toolbox of life to have is being able to ask the right questions at the right time. And all the time, like I will think of questions I'm going to ask like before I even meet with so-and-so. I'm constantly brainstorming like, okay, what have they not shared on the internet that I could ask them personally if I know them like on a personal level? What is something they haven't really touched on? What's an area that they are great at that I suck at that they could help me with? Who is someone they could connect me with that knows how to answer this question better? I'm constantly thinking about that like when I'm on my way, when I'm in an Uber, when I'm driving about what questions I want to ask. Because I think a lot of people also struggle with talking and networking and like social anxiety in general. And I think some people would look at me and be like, oh, how are you so good at talking to people? Bestie, I'm like visualizing and picturing and trying to come up qu with questions before I get to said event or before I get to said dinner. Like I'm constantly thinking about what do I want to talk about beforehand so that it's just kind of like in the dugout, ready to go. Like it's on deck, ready to go if I need to use whatever questions in the moment. The last thing that I think is the ultimate key to setting yourself up for success is by building your credit score. And I don't mean like your actual credit score. I'm just using an analogy. I think it's more so building your integrity score. I think one of the most important things in life is having a good integrity or a high level of integrity. Before I moved to LA, I met with my family friend who is... He's kind of been like sort of a mentor to me and my brother as we've grown up. Like we're just really close like that. And he's constantly checking in. He's always helped me before any interview. He Like I always call him and be like, hey, you know, this is going on. Like what advice do you have? And something that has stuck with me that he told me right before I moved to L.A. He was like, hey, I want to meet with you and just like give you some advice before you go to L.A. And I was like, of course. And this was like literally when I was 17 years old. He told me 
all you need to do, like the one thing you need to focus on is having a high level of integrity. And what I mean by that is meaning your yeses mean yes and your noes mean no. And overall, you're just a good fucking person. People can trust you. They can rely on you. They know you're going to show up when you say you're going to show up. You're supportive. You're a light when you walk into the room. You know, when I think of integrity, I just think overall stellar human being, someone I can trust and someone who's going to help and be a great asset to my life. And I think having a high level of integrity can get you so far without you hardly doing anything. Like all it means is you simply doing what you say you're going to do. Essentially, be the same person you are in the dark as you are the light, okay? Behind someone's back and in front of their back. Being honest, being kind, being fun, being supportive, being a good friend. People want to help good people. People want to help others who have a high level of integrity. Like, no offense, but if it comes down to two people and, like, one's a shitty person and one's not, I'm obviously going to pick the person who's a better person. Like, all day, every day, if I hear that someone's a good person, I'm valuing that, I'm sorry, way more than someone's random skill level. Having a high level of integrity means that you could be the person that just everyone wants to help out on a whim. So when I was thinking about an analogy I could use, I thought about building your credit score because essentially you need to build your credit score so you can get the things you want in life, right? Like if you want to buy a house, you need to have a good credit score. If you want to get a loan out to buy whatever the fork you want, you need to have a good credit score. If you want to get your dream job and be the lead host at a network television show, you need to have a good integrity score because there's a gazillion people that you have to go through before you reach that goal. And if everyone checks you off as like, yes, they have a high level of integrity. Yes, she's extremely honest. Yes, she's a kind person. Yes, she's so fun. Yes, oh my God, she's the best. If all of those people are saying those things and you just have a high level of integrity, the chances of you getting your dream gig or living your dream life are way higher than if you don't. Like no one's going to recommend you if you're a shitty person, if you don't have a high level of integrity, if you are dishonest, if you are a shitty person, if you talk about people behind their back, like if you're a big gossiper, like people remember those things. And when it comes down to you and the other person, all of those things are going to come to the table and then they're going to decide who's best fit for the job. And they're always going to pick the person that has a high level of integrity. And what's crazy about living in a city like Los Angeles is that not many people have a high level of integrity. And the people that do have a high level of integrity, they all know the other people that have a high level of integrity. So like if they, if one person hears one bad thing, all the other great people are going to know about it. And then it's like, I think about it like as a sorority, like they get blacklisted because this girl slept with this girl's ex-boyfriend. Like obviously that is a crazy example, but when I think about life, like it does come down to those things. It's like, oh, actually I heard, you know, that person screwed over this person before and like I don't trust them now. So the most important thing you can do in life is just be a good person, be nice, show up when you say you're going to show up, be reliable and be honest. And it's essentially your reputation score, your integrity score, okay, instead of your credit score. Now keep in mind, not everyone's going to like you and that's totally fine. But the people that do like you, can help make your life easier by simply you being a nice person that they just want to help. Like it's not that deep. Nothing that's that important is actually that sick and twisted. Like everything is really simple. <laughs> and with that, I'll end it with big reputation, big reputation. Ooh, you and me, we got big reputations. Ah, uh, anyway. And, and I really do think about Taylor Swift in this situation. Like, I think the reason she got through that rut with all the, all the Kim and Kanye stuff, and I love Kim, but I don't like Kanye. Like, the reason she got through all of that is because she was such a good person throughout all of it, and now he looks like the fool. He was the dishonest person. I think talk is cheap, and Taylor let her work speak for itself. Her integrity score and her reputation score is through the roof, and look at her now. Billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> love that girl to death I hope that this provided some type of value to your life and I want you to win just as much as I want to win and I'm really excited about 
entering this new year in 2024. I know that's a little early to say that, but it's not. Like, you can start now. I was even thinking the other day, I was like, hmm, do I want to start 75 hard kind of before the holidays hit? Because I feel like I always get a little depressed around the holidays because my parents are divorced and I'm still not used to it. And it's just, like, not as fun as it used to be. And I let myself go. And then I, like, rot and order food and it's just like I like want to feel bad for myself and I'm like do I just want to get ahead of this and like start forming these amazing habits and like stick to a routine and push myself harder than I ever have this winter like that's just where my head's at and I kind of wanted to share where I'm at with you guys because I'm sure some of you are in the same boat let me know in the comments below and I hope you guys have the best week ever comment down below reputation if you see this and um, be sure to make someone else's day this week. Peace. Love you guys. Follow me on TikTok at Making Moves Pod at TK's Juicy Polls. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, you know, everywhere. You know the drill. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers. Like, please, I have so many exciting guests coming. You don't want to miss out. Love you guys. Make someone else's day. Love you.